Good morning. Welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we're back out in the barn. We've got a lot more work to do to get the barn ready for baby goats that might be on the way. There's a lot of clean out to do. Today we're going to focus on finding items that we don't want to keep but do have a good value. We want to make sure we get those sold. We're going to use that money to help fund the remodel that we've been working on. So let's get into the barn and get busy. for evaluation are these bathroom sinks these are uh, single sinks appear to be cultured marble they've never been used I'm sure they were intended for a remodel before we bought the property that uh, never just took place and our remodel sense is different we, uh, we don't have anything against these particular sinks but we had some specific design elements in mind when we started remodeling the 2001 Fleetwood and these just don't fit. But they do have uh, some pretty good value stored in them. So we're gonna be selling these. That'll help us to buy studs, drywall, paint, and other things we need for the remodel we're doing. We've got one more of these to drag out. Marty's getting these scrubbed up a little bit, getting some of the dirt off of them so they'll present well online. I'm going to go grab that other two-sink countertop that's still up in the barn. Next item up, some bifold closet doors. Now, we don't have any need for these. We're going to be building out the closet in the master suite in our remodel. We'll be putting a 30-inch wide standard door on that closet. So I'm not interested in reusing these doors. Not sure uh, what the sizes are. We'll get some measurements up for them, obviously, before we sell them. But, you know, the pair might bring 25, 30 bucks. So definitely worth uh, the effort. $30 would get us, I don't know, eight or nine studs. The next item I pulled out is this vinyl screen door. It's very lightweight. Uh, it'd be really good on any mobile home. We just don't have an immediate use for it. I'm not even sure it's the right size to fit any of the doors on either of our homes. It's vinyl, it needs a new screen, it needs a new hinge. If I'm going to go through all of that effort to replace the screen and the hinge, I would build a new door from scratch. And I'm not sure that this door has any real significant value. So we're just gonna throw that in the back of the truck, take it on out to the dump. So after getting those sinks and all of the doors and other assorted debris off of this wall, we can finally see this area where we're going to be putting the goats. So the goats need to move inside of the barn, in particular before they kid, or at least before Dottie kids. Obviously Domino's not gonna have any. Um, but we've gotta get this area ready for them. We've got posts on either side of this bay that allow us to put fencing up across here so we can make a substantial pin for the goats. All we'll need at that point is some way to separate them from the rest of the barn so that they don't have access to areas where we have things stored. And we can get them in and out of the barn easily by just repositioning some fencing to get them out to their goat yard. We're gonna have to do something about this hole on the back side of the barn though. So the goats have been digging back here for years and they've managed to pull out several yards of dirt from the back side of the barn that used to form the floor of the barn. Someone tried to correct it years ago by putting these planks down, but those have just rotted in place. So we're gonna have to put a major project on the books. This has got to be corrected before we can bring the oats in. So the next item that we need to take a look at is this uh, bush hog. Uh, looks like you attach some nylon line to the front of it, just like a weed eater. 
and then that can proceed you up into a thick brush and it'll take the brush out allow you to walk in behind it be a very useful tool to have on the homestead but it's been sitting in a damp part of the barn the shafts all rusted all the bolts are rusted on i have no idea if the motor even runs so when we look at something like this and we see all of the rust that's on it and i consider the reality of needing to replace maybe half of the parts on the unit in order to make it functional my first thought is to just get rid of it and i don't think anybody else would be able to make good use of it uh, so we'll probably just take this out to the dump hey gil what do you think so inside our cage, we've got some industrial racking materials set up. Uh, we didn't set those up, the previous owner did. And it's essentially these, what is that, 20 foot long pallet racking that you'd see in Lowe's or Home Depot where they've got all the pallet stacks in the lumber area. So this is the racking that they would use to hold the pallets in place. These are the uprights. I don't see any of the horizontals in here, but they could be down here in the middle somewhere. I saw something. Did you? I did. So we may have the uh, the horizontal uh, bars as well. Got a lot of the brackets stuck in behind them. So we've got this industrial racking that we really don't have a use for. There's no place to put it in the barn. And even if we did, we don't have uh, a tractor or pallets that we need to store in this way. So this is an item we're going to try to sell because we really don't have a use for it. There is some speculation right now as to whether or not this would be sturdy and stable enough to use to build a bridge over the creek. Use this as a decking for the bridge or at least a support structure for the decking. But I think that's a project that's going to come so far in the future that it's not worth considering. So ideally we'll be selling this racking. Not sure what it's worth at this point, but we'll uh, we'll get that figured out, figure out what we can get for it. This may actually uh, be enough here to pay for several cabinets in the kitchen. So it's definitely worth figuring out how to upcycle. Well, we've started digging into the cage and we're finding lots and lots of tools like these two skill saws. This saw is definitely well used. It is covered in sawdust. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. That means the saw was working. Somebody was using it extensively. But when I see a tool like this that was in use by obviously a tradesman, and I say that because this thing weighs about oh, five times as much as my little DeWalt saw that you guys have seen me use, um, to use this all day every day would be absolutely exhausting. And so your average homeowner, homesteader, or farmer they're not going to be carrying a saw this heavy around with them. Plus, it's attached to cable or cord. So you got to be able to plug this thing in in order to operate it. Battery-powered tools are just much more practical. Cord is a little bit frayed. Definitely should be replaced if the tool was going to be used. We need to plug that in and see if it even spins. The other one, a little bit newer, about half the weight. Not a bad little saw. Need some oil on the guard. There's a little bit of uh, additional drag on this blade when I move it. That could be uh, magnets inside of the motor. So again, we'll have to plug this thing in and see if it operates. They're not tools that I would hang on to. And the, the biggest reason for that is just the weight of the tool. This would slow me down. It would take a lot longer to get any work done. I'd much rather work with something that is battery powered, lightweight, and easy to maneuver. So we'll probably sell these two, but let's plug them in and see if they work. Moment of truth. That's a good quality tool there. Uh, it's still in operable condition. There's no squeaks, nothing uh, sounds off inside of the motor. Nice smooth movement. So that's definitely something we're gonna sell. Check out the other one. We don't have a blade on this one, but it should still turn.
Shaft seems straight. It is spinning. Nice smooth motion. There's a bit of a popping sound that comes uh, from inside of the motor somewhere. That's a little bit concerning, that pop. Other than that, this thing looks like it's in good shape. As far as I can tell, it's an operable saw. So that again is something we'll put out for sale. Next up, a very old school chainsaw. This thing is so old and well used that there are no manufacturer's markings left on it. Everything is worn off. Used to have a serial number down here and a model number, but there's nothing to even tell me who manufactured this or when. Uh, looking at the technology, I'm gonna guess this is 1960s, 1970s. Uh, it does still move when you pull the cord, the chain still moves, but it's not something I'd try to refurbish. The chances of being able to buy parts to replace uh, on the inside of this about zero. The chain's all rusted, so the chain's not really of any value. The bar, however, will fit my other saw, and it's a 20-inch bar. Uh, my small saw only has a 16-inch bar on it, so that's a, a nice addition to that chainsaw. So I'll hang on to this bar. It's definitely uh, newer. So that's an Oregon bar on there, and uh, I think that's going to be a useful part, but the rest of the saw going to the dump. Ooh, talk about old technology. Wow. This is one solid piece of chainsaw right here. I like some of the features on it. Nice deep teeth for digging in for a pivot point on the log. Man, that's some old school pulling sideways to try to start the chainsaw. That's some hard work right there. I'm assuming this is a oil well for oiling the chain. Bars rusted, chains rusted. Once again, uh, let's see. McAuliffe 35. If any of y'all know exactly what this chainsaw is all about, drop uh, something in the comments. We are missing a guard on this side. Quite a bit of rust on the machine. It's not something I would try to refurbish. I probably wouldn't use it either. The balance on this is not nearly as nice as the newer saw that I've got. So this is a, another one for the dump, unless there's a collector out there who says, you know what, I just gotta add that to my collection. If you know what it is and it's interesting to you, let me know. And this is not something I was expecting to find in the barn. This is a Pioneer 202 Bounty Hunter metal detector and although it is definitely dirty it doesn't look like it's ever been used the plastic is uh, still over the head of the thing so that may actually come in useful uh, no batteries in it right now I can tell by the weight of it so we probably have to get some batteries in there but that could be a useful device so we're going to hang on to this one well i thought this was going to be a good find a little uh, senko nail gun it's a nice, small, lightweight gun. Got a little bit of rust on it, but for the most part, all of the safety features are in place. Some of the nails that are in there are rusted. Um, it does have an issue, though, that I wasn't expecting to see. There is a great big hole right through the end of the word Senko. And I have a feeling if I took this apart, I'm gonna find a 22 caliber bullet inside there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody took a shot at this nail gun. It tells me it probably wasn't working very well uh, at the time, but it's certainly not gonna work with a bullet hole in it, so that's trash. Wow, my dad had this exact saw. So this again has to be 1970s technology. See if the thing even turns on. Well, I don't know, these cords are pretty frayed. Yeah, you can see bare copper there, so I'm not gonna plug that in to see if it operates. Uh, saws like this, like say the 1970s, this would have been well used piece of equipment, but nowadays there's just much nicer equipment out there. I doubt anything like this would sell for even as little as $10. It's just not worth the effort. Off to the dump it goes. 
And what we got here? A Chicago electric power tools. Four and a half inch reciprocal saw. It's a nice, small, lightweight saw. Uh, the big Ryobi saw that I have right now is uh, always a questionable thing to take out. It's a power tool because it takes a lot of power for you to manage the thing. Reciprocal saws can be really dangerous. Uh, if you bind that blade up and the blade stops moving, the saw continues moving. And so it's really easy to hit yourself with the power tool. Uh, I know this having been almost knocked unconscious when I took one in the jaw. So you gotta be careful with these reciprocal saws. This one has uh, quite a bit of damage here around the neck. It's feeling a little bit loose. Looks like the kind of tool you'd go and buy at Harbor Tools uh, or Harbor Freight if you were just in a hurry and you needed to spend as little as possible on a quick tool. Not the kind of thing I'd want to keep in the barn and not something I think we'd get more than $10 for. So once again, off to the trash. Well, this one's definitely exciting to me. This is a one and a half horsepower Ryobi router. I do not have a router that I'm currently using. I haven't done a lot of woodwork that requires routers. Most of all the woodwork I've done to date has been rough framing, and you don't use routers that often for that. Uh, it does have a million and one uses in a wood shop though. And since we don't have a router, this one's pretty exciting to see that it's in here in the barn. It is missing a bottom plate, but those can be easily acquired online. So I think this one we're definitely gonna hang on to. So this is a Black and Decker buffer, probably a car buffer. We have a farm truck, guys. I don't spend a lot of time washing and buffing my truck. It probably needs a bath right now. In fact, it absolutely does. But I've got other things that are more important and take up my time. And so it doesn't get washed that often. I don't need a car buffer. And let's see, this one apparently they tried to sell at a yard sale before. Uh, for 12 bucks, uh, for 12 bucks, I wouldn't even bother with somebody's time to drive up the ridge to try to find us. So that one's going in the trash. And another car buffer, the Detailer by Wynn. It's got a good smooth motion to it. Doesn't look like it's been used all that much. I don't know if the other one was $12. I'm thinking maybe $20 is about the max we're going to get for something like that. I need to go online and see what these things sell for. Obviously, if that's a $25 item, it's just going to go in the trash because I don't need it. Well, this tool is actually not in bad shape. It's just a standard drill. Nothing fancy about it. Let's see, it's a quarter cable. Quarter cable is not noted as being one of the most expensive tools on the market. You don't see a lot of them in use uh, in construction or industrial areas, but they are useful tools and you can get uh, very heavy duty tools at a lower price than you would say a DeWalt or a Ridge or something like a Hitachi. Looks like this drill was for sale at one point at a yard sale for $15 and it didn't sell. I don't really have a use for this size drill. Now I do need to find a large drill uh, that is a plug drill, not one that operates off of batteries for mixing paint and especially mixing cement and mortar. It's not a good idea to use your battery powered tools for those purposes. So this could be something useful, but with this small uh, a drill, I don't think it's gonna be good for those purposes. So onto the trash that one goes. And that's a nice find, a little belt sander. Again, it's so well used. Let's see if it's got any information. It's a three inch belt sander. It's made by Wynn. Some of the uh, information on here is in a foreign language. I have no idea which. It does have a US patent number. Looks like a relatively old technology. This is not newer stuff. Not a whole lot of rust on it probably functions just fine. There may be some issues with the tensioning springs in here, but the only way we're gonna know is to buy some three inch belts on this thing and find a project we need to use it on. That's one we're gonna hang on to. And then a small Craftsman saw. This is actually not a bad saw if you've got the battery set up for it. There may be a battery and charger in here somewhere. Uh, I do not know where those would be. 
Judging by the fact that it's still got a sales tag on it, I'd say this was never actually used. So this little saw is in pretty good shape. I don't know what a small craftsman saw like this goes for. It's not really good for rough framing because the blade's not big enough to cut through a two by four. Uh, but there may be some other paneling jobs where this might come in really handy. I'll have to look into it a little bit further and see what these are worth. If this would only sell for $15, $20, it's probably not worth the effort, but we'll check into it a little bit further. So this one's kind of fun. It's kind of like a buried treasure and opening up a treasure chest. This is a Makita, so I'm expecting to find a high quality tool inside here. Let's get in here and see what we got. Got a little bit of dirt and water that's penetrated here. What we have here is a hand plane. Wow, there's a significant amount of rust on the uh, the blade. Got some corrosion on the bottom plate. It's been chattered up pretty good. This aluminum housing has some deep corrosion marks in it. That's really a shame. That is a good quality tool. Um, I do have another Makita plane uh, here in the barn that we brought with us from uh, Nevada. We used that quite a bit when we were doing the remodel on the train depot. With all the old wood we were working with, it was quite often we'd find a stud that was a little bit out of plane with the rest of the studs of the wall. And just taking a plane like this and shaving off a quarter inch of wood down the middle of the stud was a pretty easy thing to do. So these do come in pretty handy uh, in construction environments. I remember one window that the, the framing was as tight as it could possibly be. We couldn't make the window open any wider or the frame open any wider and the window wouldn't fit. It was about an eighth of an inch off. And it took several hours of working with this plane and a chisel to open it up a little bit further but because of this thing, we were able to get that window in. So this is a shame, really, that uh, this was allowed to sit in water. And I'd say this is trash at this point. All of the parts on this Makita are replaceable. So if we could order the new pieces, we could take all of the corroded pieces off and replace them. But there's no guarantee what's going to go, uh, what's going to be going on inside the motor. So I wouldn't hang on to this. It's going in the trash. Well, the sun is starting to go down. We've got animals to feed and plenty of other homestead work that needs to be done. We've been doing a lot of barn cleaning while we've been taking a look at all these items that we might sell in order to get money for the remodel. We've got a lot of work yet to do today. So I think we're gonna call it quits on the treasure hunt in the tool cage. We'll get back to pulling some of these tools out and taking a look at them, find out which of them are gonna be valuable that we can resell and which of them won't. We appreciate you joining us here on the Return Homestead today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Hit that thumbs up button while you're in there. Make sure everyone knows you enjoyed watching the video. If you let YouTube know by hitting that thumbs up, they do share the video out with more people. Also, check us out on Facebook. We're going to have some more information about all of these tools. We'll also be posting all of this out on Craigslist. So we're going to try to sell the items that we've talked about today on Craigslist. When you find us on Facebook, please go ahead and follow us there and please share out the channel. We've set ourselves the target of becoming monetized by the end of the year. We're really close. We're approaching the 600 subscriber mark and we just need another 400 subscribers to go. And we need the information spread out more. We need more people to be aware of the channel and find what they're looking for uh, in the information that we provide. So please share it with everyone and anyone you know. We just want to see if we can get to that monetization point before the end of the year. And we need your help for that. We'll see you again next time.